Hey, welcome to the first presentation in deductive geometry. This is called special quadrilaterals. Well, hang on, what's deductive geometry? Uh, you've actually been doing some of that already, where you make deductions. Okay, you write down some information and you deduce or conclude from it something else. So we've been doing this sort of thing in setting up a deductive argument for saying that two triangles are congruent or similar. This method of thinking is very, very important in problem solving in general, but in particular in geometry, in, uh, in mathematics. But the discipline of getting a statement, having a reason for it, leading on to another one, is a very important problem solving technique or argument forming technique that you can use in many different areas. Let's have a look at our special quadrilaterals. I think I've got one of each of them all here. Can you name them? I don't know, do you remember this one? I think it might be a trapezium. This one over here, what is that? I think that might be a parallelogram. Oh, this looks very similar. No, it's not similar, different similar. It looks much the same, but it's not, is it? It's got 90 degrees in the corners. So what's that? That's a rectangle. Here's another variation of the same thing. Now, are you getting the idea? Some of these are very, very special. I think I'm going up in, in the degree of speciality here, if you like. They're getting more and more special. This has got 90 degrees and equal sides. I think that's a square. What about this one over here? I'll give you a hint. It's a very windy day today. Good day to fly, eh? Oh, yeah, you're right. It's a kite. OK, and down here, this is an interesting one. Um, it's a parallelogram and it's got equal sides. So it's called a square pushed out of shape, isn't it? It's like pushing this one here out of shape and it's called a rhombus. So how much do you know from your previous geometry study about each of these? We're going to use deductive reasoning here, not coordinate geometry like we have before on a grid, but instead reasoning to deduce things about figures and whether sides are equal in figures and so on. This is a very interesting unit in the development of theorems in Euclid of course was the guy who did uh, or who derived a lot of the theorems in geometry sometimes called Euclidean geometry when you form these arguments and um, deductions and reach a conclusion let's go and have a look at each of these figures in turn now here's the first one a trapezium is a quadrilateral one pair of opposite sides parallel. There you are. Now, these sides don't have to be equal. And by the way, commonly students think these sort of triangular ends have to be equal. No, they don't. No, they don't. And in an earlier presentation on um, measurement, remember we were talking about the area of this figure, half the sum of the two sides, um, and then times by the vertical height. We're going to be doing something different here. Um, and we can say down here, and these are screen clippings from Pearson, so it's handy to have that textbook, or the E version. A trapezium has no particular properties. All that we've got are these two parallel sides. So that's going to lead to the possibility of some uh, alternate angles or whatever if we have a line crossing both of them. Uh, maybe if we went up here, but this is outside the trapezium. If we call that angle alpha, then this angle would also be alpha. Uh, corresponding angles, that sort of thing. But no particular properties for that figure. But you should know its name and the idea that those sides are parallel. And of course that the two triangles on the end that can be made by dropping those perpendiculars down there are not, uh, I, uh, are not uh, any particular size. Okay, and they needn't be equal. All right, or congruent. Let's have a look at the next figure. Come on down here and we'll just go to the next one. Now, building up now to a bit more of a special quadrilateral, first of all, I haven't actually defined quadrilateral, have I? Four quad and latus lateris, I think it is, in Latin, means side. So this is any four-sided figure here. 
in geometry land, any four-sided figure. And so a parallelogram is basically both pairs of opposite sides must be parallel. Okay. And so if they are, we generally write this, see that there, that parallel to that, and that's parallel to this one over here. These signs uh, imply parallel and you put them on the two sides that are parallel. Okay, now what are special properties here? Both pairs of opposite angles are equal in magnitude, so they've marked them there, that one and that one, and this one and the double one here. Opposite angles are equal in magnitude. Both pairs of opposite sides are also equal. Those little marks there make the opposite sides equal. And the diagonals bisect each other. So see this little mark here, it means BE equals ED. And this little mark here, AE equals EC. Why have Pearson's gone to those little squiggly do's? Ah, to show that they are equal when you've already used one stroke, that's that one, for those two, two strokes for these two. So you can't use that again, otherwise in the same figure it will suggest or imply that the sides are all equal. Not just the pair you want, but any other pair that you've used that symbol for. So they've used a little symbol like that and a little symbol like that to pick out other pairs. So that's an interesting and important point. Uh, as soon as you use a symbol for equality, you can only use it once in the figure unless all the sides with, marked with that are going to be exactly the same as each other. Do you remember these? Usually done in uh, more junior geometry. And uh, if you haven't done it before, well, you can catch up now and get some of these properties. We're going to need these as we go on and look at deductive geometry. OK, let's go to another one now. A kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent sides equal. Oh, well, here we are, two pairs of adjacent sides. That pair and these two are equal. That's a convex kite. So there's no holes around the outside. Convex... Uh, convex lens in science, right, like that, smooth outside, concave is like that, sort of got a cave on the outside. So here's a concave kite, it's got a hole in it there. Still got adjacent sides there, those two equal, and these two equal, but uh, it's got a cave on the outside, no smooth outside, but a cave. So, you know, this is our little cave in here, if you like. All right, well, what have we got for that? We've got, oh, I haven't got any special, uh, hang on, we'll just come here and come down again. Haven't got any special statements there, but you can see that we have equal angles in here and in here, and these bisect each other and the other diagonal at right angles here. So we've got some little properties there for that one. And this one, again, you can see if you bisect that angle, it will be perpendicular to the base and it will bisect it. If you have these angles are equal. So lots of little bits and pieces due to lots of pairs of congruent triangles there. Okay, let's go to the next one now. We're coming down to a rectangle, so this is a quadrilateral in which all angles are right angles in here. Okay, so what do you notice? Because of that, these sides are parallel and these sides are parallel. It's a parallelogram, so it's got all of the properties of a parallelogram, plus the diagonals are equal in length now. This one and this one are equal in length. And uh, they cut the uh, um, or ma uh, lines of symmetry, if you like, the midpoints of the sides are lines of symmetry. So if you join them, let's just draw it over here again, it's getting crowded. Lines joining the midpoints of opposite sides. So if we join that through there, these will be identical. Hmm, that doesn't look too good, does it? Okay, so come down here more. 
So this and this are identical. And if we do it the other way, split it up that way, we will have a line of symmetry or can um, construct uh, two identical pieces. Okay, so a lot of this stuff you already know, but we want to try and prove some of these things. What about a rhombus? Oh, a rhombus. Okay, getting more complicated now, more sophisticated figure. A rhombus is also a quadrilateral, but all sides are equal in length. So it hasn't got a 90 in here, though. Not like a rectangle, but it's got something a rectangle doesn't have. And that is all these sides, all four of them, not just the opposite ones, are equal in length. So sometimes they say it's a square, but it isn't. It's only got 90. Pushed out of shape. That's another way of thinking about it. A square pushed out of shape. So you lose the 90 in the corner, but you have got all the sides equal. So quite clearly, it is a parallelogram because we've got opposite sides are parallel um, and the diagonals will bisect each other but this time at 90 degrees perpendicular sign this means 90 degrees so they bisect each other but at 90 in here so that's a 90 for that bisection uh, diagonals bisect the vertical angles so they split all of these into two equal parts and uh, the opposite angles of course this one and this one of a parallelogram are equal so still got those properties this is a fairly complicated figure isn't it there's lots of things happening here because all the sides are equal in length lots of congruent triangles in there and both diagonals are lines of symmetry so when you let's just draw one over here when you draw a diagonal, we're saying these two are identical shapes. Why? Because they all have the same sides here and they would be congruent triangles. So it is a line of symmetry. A line of symmetry down here again, remembering is a line which cuts the, any figure into uh, two identical pieces. Okay, come on down, and what's the last one we've got here? I think this is the last one. A square is a rectangle with two adjacent sides equal in length, or a rhombus with all angles equal to 90. That's an interesting way of uh, looking at a square. A square with two adjacent sides equal in length. We usually say as a result of that, if two adjacent sides are equal in length, then this will be 90. We usually say a square has four equal sides and 90 degrees in the corner. As a result of that, which one came first? What do you want to think about there? Or it's a rhombus with all angles equal to 90. So which way do you want to think about it? A rhombus is a square pushed out of shape? Or is a square a special rhombus with 90 in the corner? Okay, this is a bit of a horse and a cart problem, isn't it? Which comes first? And you can think of it either way. As we build it up here with Pearson's, we're building up the complexity of the, of the type of figure, aren't we? We're saying as you go from a quadrilateral to a parallelogram and then start to put special things in it, like um, 90 degrees in the corners to a rectangle and so on and so forth, we are building up the complexity of the figure. And so a square is at the top of the pyramid. Hey, we haven't done pyramids. What's that about? Oh. Okay, that's a, that's a metaphor, isn't it? When you climb to the top, then the square is the most special of all these quadrilaterals, I suppose. So we would think about building them that way. Okay, let's have a look at the special properties. It's got all the properties of a rectangle and a rhombus. And this time the diagonals make an angle of 45 with each side. So here we have it in here, 45 and 45 in there because um, again it's got the symmetry of uh, a rhombus so the diagonals actually bisect the corner angle but the corner angle is 90 so there's going to be two 45s in there so this is a good figure to work with lots of stuff you can deduce from a square about what sides are equal and so on each diagonal has a length equal to root 2 times the side length oh yeah where did that come from 
Okay, let's have a look. Oh, I think I see uh, an old dead Greek raising his head here. This diagonal, called the diagonal length, these are both the equal lengths, aren't they? They are both equal. If we called it one unit, d squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared by Pythagoras, and therefore d squared equals 2, d was plus or minus root 2, but we won't have negative because d is a length greater than naught. It's a positive. So root 2 is the length of the diagonal if the side is 1. So that here we're saying it's root 2 times the side length. So, of course, if we made this 3 units and this 3 units, because it's a square, of course, then the other side's going to be root 2 um, by 3 uh, units. So you could do that with Pythagoras, again, with 3 in these spots here, 3 squared plus 3 squared. All right, so you might try that, but that's an interesting one. So lots of things happening in these figures as, well, as they get more complicated, as they've got more special properties, if you like. OK, what are we going to do with this? Let's come down and have a look at some deductive reasoning. OK, so we're going to start by just writing statements out. For the following shape, here we are, write down the information shown, then use the definition of quadrilaterals to determine the type of shape. We are on a process of making deductions on that journey. Get our mind to say, I observe this, therefore I will deduce that this is the case. This is a very small beginning in trying to teach you uh, some deductive reasoning. And we did this with congruent similar triangles, of course. Listing the information, matching things up, and making a final deduction. OK, so the shape is a parallelogram, because both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. OK, what do we notice about this one? Opposite sides are parallel, and two adjacent sides are equal in length. OK, opposite sides mean it's a parallelogram. Two adjacent sides means that the parallelogram is a rhombus. Because I would like to put something a little bit extra in there. So well, two adjacent sides are equal in length. And opposite sides are parallel. But two adjacent sides equal in length implies that all sides are uh, equal there if it's a parallelogram because uh, opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal and then the ones adjacent to it are equal as well so uh, that you could put a little bit more detail in there see what we're trying to say can you spot the idea of working out a deductive argument so that at the end of it no one would question that this is a rhombus. OK, let's do some more. Important to get into this uh, deductive reasoning pattern. Some people find this difficult because their mind works more divergently rather than convergently. To converge on a conclusion means you'd use a series of deductions. Divergent thinking is more thinking outside the square. Oh, or a rhombus? Oh, square? Oh, oh. Thinking outside and uh, thinking of other things. That's not going to help you much in this one. OK, so let's have a look. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. By drawing the diagonal A, C, so there's the diagonal A, C, prove that triangle A, D, C is congruent. A, D, C, so that's this one, with a, a C, B, A. So they've mated them up in the right order. Notice that? A, C and A, there, are equivalent in these two triangles. OK, so let's have a look and see if we can do that. So we're going to copy down the diagram. There's a diagram with what we know. And the two triangles there, we usually say in triangles ADC and ABC or CBA, we might know which way they match up yet. But anyway, we say that, and now let's match angles. Angle DCA is equal to angle BAC. D, uh, hang on, DCA, they've gone this way first. DCA equals angle BAC, alternate angles. Okay? 
Now, you probably don't need to put this in. That's already marked on the figure. You could call this hour for one and hour for two. That's a neater way than putting the big angle expression, so you could do that if you wanted to. Angle DAC, so this one now, DAC equals BCA, and that's alternate. Also, this angle and this angle alternate because the other two sides are parallel. AB, AD is parallel to BC, can you see it? AD is parallel to BC, so that and that are alternate angles. AC is a common side. So have we done it? Yes, we've ha we have. We've matched up two angles and a side in corresponding positions. But let's just watch the matchups. A here corresponds to C and the other triangle, A and C. And D here is common to both. D matches Oh, sorry. D there matches with B, this isn't common to both, sorry. D matches with B. And then angle C in the original uh, triangle here, angle C matches with angle A. So that's got to be angle A there. So it's, it's flipped over, basically. And uh, this is due to your alternate angle. So it's important to list them down. And then we're going to do the second part. Come back up here. We're going to do the second part of the problem. Use these triangles to prove that angle ADC equals ABC and angle DAB equals BCD. Okay, so let's have a look at that. We're now going to read the angles off from up here. Angle ADC, ADC corresponds to, corresponds to CBA. Or, um, let's have a look, um, our diagram's a bit messy up there, let's go back and clean it up a bit. So we're saying here, our um, angle ADC is equivalent to CBA. I would prefer you did that, and that's the same as ABC, but when we read it off from here, let's just clean this up a bit. When we read off ADC, ADC, because we've written these in corresponding order, CBA is what we should take out of that. Matching angles. You really should use this conclusion, this deduction, to go on. So ADC, sure, you can call the angle ABC, but using this, ADC corresponds to angle CBA. Just writing it in more the corresponding order. Okay, now, um, let's, what was the next thing that we were supposed to do here? Oops, hang on, let's just come down slowly here. So here, what special property um, of a parallelogram does this prove? Oh, we've got another pair here, angle DAB and BCD. Okay, DAB and BCD, so angle DAB, let's have a look at angle DAB, DAB is that one, and that consists of two angles, doesn't it? DAC and BAC. So let's see if we can get a statement for that. DAC and BAC, and then we go and look for BCD. That's what's the angle there, BCD, is BCA plus DCA. I'll write those two down. Okay, and now we start to match up what the pieces that are equal. Now, <clears throat> from our congruent triangles, if we go back to DAC, let's go back here, D, A and C will be the same as B, C, A. And that's what we've stated there. And then the other pieces... Uh, B, A, C, D, B, A, C here. Let's rub this out again. I want to show you how to get the order. Um, okay, so in this one, D, C, A, D, C, and A is the same as B, C, A, using that order there. Uh, well, hang on, I won't do it there. I'll go back to where I should be up the top here. DCA, DCA is the same as BAC, what we said before there. And so 
the two angles, angle DAB and BCD, are equal because it consists of adding up two equal parts. Now, let's have a look at what have we proven. This one here equals this one here. So uh, we are actually proving some properties of a parallelogram, and that's what they ask us. Let's go back up. What sort of special property of a parallelogram does this prove? Uh, let's have a look. So what is it? Where the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. We've shown one pair of them at least. Okay, now we've got to um, show that, hang on, have we shown one pair? No, we had these two already, didn't we? Yep, from matching up congruent triangles. So we've shown both pairs there. Name the two triangles now. In this next one, we've got a big problem up here. There's lots of parts to it. In part D, by drawing the diagonal BD, prove that those two triangles are um, congruent and then prove these sides. So what we're doing is taking a parallelogram and using our congruent idea, as I mentioned in that congruent similar triangles presentation, we can actually prove lots of properties of geometric shapes here. Okay, so let's name the triangles ABE and CDE. And that's this one and this one. What we're going to do is try to show that they are congruent and then end up with matching up some sides here. Okay, let's have a look. The triangle ABE, what have we got? Well, first of all, AB equals CD. Why? Because we've already proven those triangles congruent. Okay. Um, AB is equal to CD. Um, let's then go to angle DCE. DCE is this one down here. Is equal to BAE up there. Alternate angles. And then, of course, we're going to go in here and here. These two are alternate for the same reason. The lines are parallel. And therefore, we've proven we've got two angles and a side in corresponding positions. So those two triangles, A, B, E, yeah, A matched with C in the other one. A and C and B matched with D so it's B and D and E was the common angle in here from vertically opposite angles if you like and so they are congruent triangles so what can we say A E let's look at it A E is equal to C E ok and D E let's just do it again DE will equal BE because they are matching sides in congruent triangles. You don't actually have to put that there. And then what have we proven is that the diagonals of parallelogram bisect each other. Let's clean all this up and have a look because AE equals CE, yep, and then DE and BE. So that means that those diagonals are cutting each other in equal parts at the point E. So we say the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Bisect, bi means two, section, sectioning. So the word bisect means cut into two equal parts. Applies two equal parts. And that's what we've just show, shown there using congruent triangles. Do you get it? The congruent and similar triangles idea is an important one for establishing other relationships in more complicated figures. Let's go down and have a look at another one. You're getting the idea, some people like this, some people don't, of building up an argument and coming to a conclusion, an irrefutable conclusion based on your reasoning. Okay, the diagonals of a, bi a quadrilateral bisect each other at right angles, prove that this quadrilateral is a rhombus. Okay, so we're given a lot of information in there about the diagonals. Now, what's the definition of a rhombus? Well, must have 
Opposite sides parallel, it's got to be a parallelogram, and two adjacent sides must be equal, making all the sides therefore equal in a rhombus. So let's work in some triangles. So name the triangles, let's do AXD and AXB. This one, and get rid of this, this one here. Because if we work in those, we'll get some match-ups. Okay, well first of all, can you see that angle AXD and angle A um, and AXB, AXB, hang on, I've got the wrong triangles. Um, yep, I'm going to go this way. We could have gone the other way, we're going to go this way, because that's what the book does. AXD, hang on, I'm still wrong. AXB and AXD, this way. Oh, we want these two sides adjacent. So we've got um, a couple of congruent triangles in here, which, um, or several of them, which we could use, and uh, you, we choose the ones that the book has got here. Okay, so these two angles, AXD and AXB are both 90, that's given. AX, this side here, is a common side. Okay, and DX equals BX. Now, what do we have here? DX, yeah, we were told that this was bisected, so DX equals BX. So we've got enough matchups for those two top triangles here. This one and this one. Okay, so what have we done? Have we done enough? We've said we've got a side, an angle, and a side. Side, angle, side in both of them. So therefore they are congruent. Writing them down is uh, matching up now is easier. Let's have a look. A is the same angle in both. So it's A and A. And then X is the matching angle. They match. So it's the same order in both of them. And this angle and this angle would match up. So they are equal. Okay, so we have matched them up. Now, what can we do? We could look at what sides are equal. So if you look at AD, that will be the same as AB. And I think we just did it. That one and that one are equal. So that's a pair of um, uh, um, adjacent sides in the figure. So they are equal. And now, can we go and prove that opposite sides are parallel, okay, because we've got to show from up here opposite sides are parallel and a pair of adjacent sides are equal. We've shown the pair of adjacent sides are equal. Let's go carefully and see if we can do it in another pair of triangles. So let's get rid of all this and say triangle AXD, this is what I was going to do first, AXD and CXB. I've done it in a different order. Okay, those two triangles, what can we get out of them? Well, let's have a look. What have we got? Yep, we've got an angle in there that matches both 90. So that's AXD equals CXB equals 90. Okay, let, what else have we got? AX, hang on, AX equals CX. Write that down, that's given. And DX equals BX. Oh yes, I think we've just done it again we can say here that those two triangles are congruent side angle side again. AXD, let's go back up just here, AXD, let's write it down, AXD is equivalent to or congruent with, what do they match? We said um, here A and C would be equal, Okay, so it's CX is at the same angle on both triangles and D is equivalent to B. It's actually been spun around, hasn't it? Okay, if you think about this, it's spun around and laying on top of the other one. So is that what they got there, AXD and CXB? Yes, that's the one they got there. Okay, so what can we say now? We can say, read them off. DAX is it going to equal to BCX in the same sort of order in both? And what does that mean? Let's go up and have a look. DAX and BCX. 
Okay, so DAX, DAX, and BCX. Ah, they are equal now, but they are in alternate positions. So that means this line and this line are parallel. Just remember that. If you've got a line crossing parallel lines, you have alpha 1 and alpha 2 equal because alternate. And conversely, if you don't know these lines are parallel but the angles are equal, you can deduce lines are parallel. We're going backwards there. Okay, so we've got a pair of um, sides parallel now and then we can do the same thing the other way and prove that AB is parallel to CD. Let's just do that. Okay, so let's tidy this up. Uh, AB, we want to prove that AB is parallel to CD. Alright, so in this particular case, what would we do? Well, you go back to your pair of uh, triangles and uh, try to show which ones? This one and this one, or oh, hang on, which way are we doing it? A, B and C, D, yep. That one, that one, or this one and this one. And you can do that in a similar way, can't you? Uh, by going into those other true triangles there. So there's many different pairs of congruent triangles. And here, um, AB is parallel to CD, and uh, they've said using the other two triangles, you could prove it. It's supposed to actually do the whole thing, but it's very long. Uh, and so what have we done? You list the information so that you can make a final deduction. You've proven both pairs of uh, opposite sides equal and uh, two adjacent sides, uh, opposite sides parallel, sorry, and two adjacent sides equal, so that's going to be a rhombus. Okay, so it's a lot of arguing, isn't it, here? And you've got to have reasons and things to su substantiate your deductions. Okay, let's have a look at you trying to do some arguments here, deductive reasoning. Okay, so get the hang of it by trying to discuss what you see in these figures and then identify the shape. Okay, now um, here's a similar one to what we just did. So I want you to try and follow the example and make a nice argument, a deductive argument as to what's going on here. What's equal to what and why? Can you prove it? Everyone says, can you prove it? No, we don't want to guess it, we want to prove it. And that's a done with a deductive argument, making statements that build on each other and that are irrefutable. No one can argue that if that's that, then this is it and so on. And that's the idea. All right, so I'll show you some of these and then down below we've got the proofs. So let's come down here now. Three, four and five. Okay, you've got to pick, pick the right triangles. You can see congruence is very important here to get the matchups and make some deductions. Okay, and six and seven. And I'll show you the answers now fairly extended, so you have to pause the presentation and mark your work. Okay, so there's one and part of two. They're very long, these um, solutions, because they consist of an argument, a deductive discussion here. And so I'll just bring that up, so you've got all of two there nicely. Lots of work, lots of reasoning here. Okay, let's go down to question three, three and four, see if we can get all of that up there. We've got most of um, four. Okay, and that's the rest of four. Try not to write too much out. We like to put the reasons in brackets more in abbreviated form rather than long sentences. It's mathematics, we use symbols a lot rather than uh, long uh, sentences in English or another subject, another language. So here's five, six and seven. This sort of thing. 
is very good. Okay. All right. Are you ready to take the next step up? Let's go and have a look at another few problems here, a bit more challenging. So here's question eight from, and nine from Pearson's. So you, you might pause the presentation and have a go. And uh, there's all these other definitions or shortened definitions of how to prove something's a parallelogram or a rhombus or whatever. All right, so let's go down and see the rest of nine and 10. And then see if we can get, yep, 11 and 12 on there. Okay, and let's have a look at the answers to those. There's eight. I'll try and get nine on there. Most of nine. <clears throat> okay, just come down and see the rest of nine if we can. Okay, keep going. And we're coming down to 10, 11, and 12. Okay, not a bad idea to understand this connection. All right, let's go down and have a look at some reasoning problems here. <clears throat> okay, interesting, a bit hard of these. I'll show you the answers then. Okay, some written explanations there. Just extending your ability to reason things out. Let's go to the final open-ended questions if you're uh, good enough here. 16 through 19, a lot of worded questions here. In geometry we're usually dealing with figures, but uh, they're delivering the information here just with words. Let's go and have a look at the answers to those now. Okay, there we have them. Um, so this is fairly challenging for most people, getting a deductive argument together. Very important for your thinking and problem solving, and um, particularly in geometry where we're trying to make deductions about other figures. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, deductive geometry is going to go on from here, looking at um, circle uh, angles in circles and uh, things like that. And uh, these figures are going to get very interesting. So uh, I hope to uh, see you in the next presentation. Cheers for now.